Hi, good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's The TD Show. Uh, my name is National Tournament Director Chris Bird and tonight I am joined by National Tournament Director Brian Yang. Uh, Brian is also an international arbiter and a member of the Tournament Director Certification Committee or as we uh, so fondly know it, the TDCC. Uh, Brian's mm -hmm. also the president of the Kansas Chess Association. You can find out more about Brian by typing guest in the chat channel. Brian, welcome. Good evening. Hi. Um, so, Brian, uh, before we get into tonight's topic of discussion, triple occurrence of position, um, my usual question to most of my guests, how, how did you get into being a TD? So when I was growing up in Kansas, uh, there was no USCF tournaments, uh, like maybe once a year. So I decided to become a club TD uh, just uh, as a junior in high school, so around 15. And uh, basically just started running tournaments. Um, and you know, one thing led to another where I just kept getting more and more credits of uh, bigger size um, and just kept testing and going from there, so. Great. And then, um, mm -hmm. you know, far be it from me to, to blow your trumpet, so to speak, but I know yeah. you're, 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 I'm not going to say how old you are, but let's say sure. mid, mid twenties and uh, you've already yeah. been, you've already been chief TD of, uh, the U S open and, uh, national elementary, uh, you mm -hmm. know, some of the scholastic nationals, yeah. uh, it's pretty good going for someone your age. Yeah. Um, just still learning from my peers, my mentors and looking forward to somebody else to, uh, you know, take my place as well. So. Exactly. I think all of us are, are still learning from our peers. And mm -hmm. I think our peers are still learning from everyone else as well. You yep. know, there's always something to learn in this job. Mm -hmm. so. Definitely, definitely never stop learning. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, excuse me. Uh, so anyway, so let's get into tonight's topic, which uh, should be fun. Uh, so I know Brian has put some, together some really mm -hmm. good examples for us. So let's uh, flip over and see triple occurrence of position. Um, so um, sure. this is the main, um, the main rule. Uh, so triple occurrence of position is basically a draw claim. Uh, someone is claiming that the same position has been reached um, three times. Um, and there is various criteria that must meet here, um, meaning the same player must be on the move each time. Um, the pieces must all have the same, uh, be on the same squares. And uh, all the possible moves of all the pieces uh, must be the same, including the right to castle, or to capture a pawn en passant. So this is the main rule that we're going to be discussing, um, how to go about um, ensuring and you know, validating that a claim is correct or incorrect, um, and making sure that they all meet this criteria, and uh, making sure that you can recognize when a position meets this criteria, and some other little nuances uh, as we get into uh, the rules here that are uh, US chess rules. Yeah. So let's uh, move on over. So um, we're going to quickly move on to the next rule, which uh, basically is a clarification of no repetition of moves. So what you're looking for with triple occurrence of position is that the position is repeated three times. There's no rule uh, regarding a draw by repetition on moves. I know we call it threefold repetition. I mean, that's like the common name for it. Uh, mm -hmm. But remember, the draw is actually based on that position. Uh, and all the pieces, you know, what squares they're on and what moves they possibly have. Um, so uh, this clarifies also that the three positions do not to, need to be consecutive. So um, you can reach the three positions as long as they're identical, uh, any stage throughout the game. Um, and then there's also no rule regarding perpetual check, although, you know, quite often uh, a perpetual check is uh, some form of a triple occurrence of position. So and uh, quickly dashing on to the next um, rule, which I've uh, uh, is entitled How to Claim, and this is paragraph one of How to Claim, and we'll meet paragraph two later on in the show, uh, because paragraph two is uh, sort of not necessarily how to claim. Um, so when a player is making a claim, um, if the move is required to complete the third occurrence of the position, the player claiming the draw should write the move on the score sheet, but not play the move on the board. Um, so basically, they, uh, if the, the move they are about to make 
is the one that's going to be the third time that position has been on the board. Again, they should write it on the score sheet, but not play it on the board. We'll get into it later on about what happens if they do play it on the board. But, um, you know, for purposes of doing this correctly, um, write the move, don't make the move on the board. If no move is required, say for instance, the position that's already on the board is the third time that position has been repeated, then the player just stops the clocks and makes the claim. So it does not at that stage have to write a move on the board. All sounds pretty simple. Uh, let's, now that we've looked at the rules um, and what you need to do to uh, make those claims, let's go and have a look at some examples. Um, so Brian was very nice to prepare us with some examples. And uh, let's get into our first one here real quick. So this is an example of uh, a position um, that is uh, already on the board. So we're going to scroll through some of the moves here. Uh, you can probably see the move list uh, on the show. So uh, the position we're going to look at is the next position, and it's this rook g7. So uh, um, look at the uh, position of all the pieces, and then uh, we're going to just basically follow the repetition here in the game. So we're going to go bishop f1, rook g8, bishop b2, and rook g7. And we've got the same position twice now. And then bishop f1, rook g4, bishop b2, and rook back to g7. So black at this point, um, well, sorry, white at this point, can turn around and say, this position has already been reached three times. Um, I'm not going to make a move. I'm not going to write a move on the score sheet. I'd like to claim a draw. Uh, because we can see here that this position this position and this position have to move 35, 37, and 39 are all the same. All the pieces have the same legal moves. There's no Kathleen or en passant issues for us to deal with. Every time in this position, mm -hmm. it was white to play, which is very important. And, um, you know, so, uh, and the same position, all, all everyone on the, on the right squares and everything's the same. Right. So this would be a very good example of a threefold repetition uh, or triple occurrence of position, as we should know it, um, being being able to be claimed by white. Uh, very simple one. Uh, Brian, uh, yes. now we're going to look at uh, the next position, which is one that's about to appear. So you want to mm -hmm. run us through this one? Yeah, so in this one, um, black starts with the move rook takes c3, which doesn't look like it's part of the sequence, but it actually becomes the sequence um, after uh, for the following move. So after rook takes c3, um, you know, and this is where like white plays queen c8 check. And, you know, this is where you want to avoid saying, oh, look, it's a repetition or a perpetual check. You know, it's just a check. So uh, after king h7, uh, queen, h4, queen f5 check again. This is the second time. And after king g8, Queen C8 check, uh, King H7, and now back to Queen F5 check. And here, uh, Black will uh, have to write down on his score sheet uh, King G8, not making the move on board, but saying, you know, King G8 is my next move. I want to play, and I'm going to play to claim a draw. And so uh, after writing King G8 and verifying the position, um, the Black will be granted a draw in this case. So right. Um, I think one thing to note is um, notice that in the previous position where we saw that the move rook g7 was played three different times, uh, in this case, it's not rook uh, king g8 uh, three different times. It's actually rook takes c3, that's the first time, uh, king g8 the second time, and then are about to be appearing uh, king g8 the third time. So it's not really you know king g8 three times, it's actually rook takes c3 the first time. So. Uh, just got to be careful looking at the position, not the moves. Uh, right. The so if you're looking for king g8, king g8, and king g8, you're not going to see it. So this this move no. here was rook takes no. c3, but it's still the exact same position that's on the board as after king g8, and a mm -hmm. further king g8 that would be claimed after queen f5 check down here. Yep. Yep. Okay. So let's get into... Uh, Brian gave us a little uh, fun position here. Yeah. Uh, and I think this was... This was one that you, um, I think, happened in a real game, right? Yeah, all these uh, examples came from uh, over the board position. So I had something that where I had to make a ruling. And um, I would say also for tournament directors, too, 
um, don't mess with the original board. Uh, use a second board uh, right. to do all this analysis on whether or not it's a three four repetition. Don't mess with the original board at all. Um, I think that's a very easy mistake to do. Just to you know, oh, let's just use this board. And it's like no, get a second board. Uh, worst case scenario, which I have done, is you know, use your phone's little app with a chessboard and just play the moves on there if you can't find a second board. So. Um, and this one was a little bit uh, more fun because uh, White had multiple times uh, to claim uh, three triple occurrence position, um, but uh, <laughs> it went it, as far as even four times the uh, same. So uh, right, let's run through some of the moves here. here. Yep. Mm -hmm. This was one of the four. Yep. Right? So this is the starting one, and so that's the first one, and it's the second nice. time he plays this bishop g4 with the queen on f3. All right, and now so, White's yeah, we're the just around. Yep. And so I think White decides to make it on D1. So this is the first time that the Queen's on D1, the Bishop's on G4. Uh, again, that's the second time here. And of course, White repeats it again, third time here. Uh, but again, they didn't claim it here, but they could have with this position with the Queen D1 and Bishop on G4. And right. the game continue on, which it looks like it's very evident that they were trying to make time control, maybe 40 moves, uh, because right now we're on move 37. And so this is the third time, so you know, of the first general position. And then finally the fourth time. And they're here, white finally claimed uh, uh, three triple occurrence, or actually should be quadruple occurrence uh, four, four times. So, <laughs> right. Um, one thing, know, one, thing, one yeah. thing that's really worth pointing out, I think, is um, in, in this position here, uh, mm -hmm. after uh, queen d1, bishop g4 here, is the queen in between goes to g1 here, and yeah. then back to d1, and then goes to f1, <laughs> and back to d1. Yeah. The fact that it went to f1 and g1 um, in here is irrelevant. What is relevant is this position with the queen on d1 and the bishop g4. The in-between move is, yeah. is totally relevant to the repetition, all that matters is that same position right. um, has been reached uh, three times. Um, obviously, once he's played queen h1 here, this mm -hmm. this claim is no longer on the table. And so, but once we get down here, you'll see this position, mm -hmm. I believe, has actually been reached four times. Back, yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. So anyway, uh, yes. So another valid uh, claim of triple occurrence of position. Let's get on to uh, an interesting situation. So mm -hmm. one of the rules states that the legal moves um, of all the pieces has to be uh, the same. Let me uh, fix that real quick. Oh, sure. there we go. Um, so one of the, the, well, probably the most common place that this um, would happen is when it comes to castling. Um, so here in this position, uh, it's white to play. Um, and now white still um, legally has castling rights on the king side. Um, although in the position, it's not legal to castle um, because the bishop uh, that's on a6 is actually attacking uh, the, the f1 square and the king cannot castle through check, as we all know. Um, but then, so this position here is uh, basically... The, you know, the first time we're going to see this, and then we're going to see it a couple more times. But we'll highlight the difference. So let's move on through the through the moves here. White plays rook g1, um, which uh, means, you know, white can no longer actually castle queen, uh, kingside because he's now moved, moved the h1 rook. Uh, black plays rook b8. White puts the rook back on h1, and black puts the rook back on a8. So this position is identical um, to the first position that we saw, if we run back through here to the starting position. And then we run to here, and it's identical. However, for the purposes of uh, working out a triple occurrence of position, these positions are not identical. Because here in the first position, even though white cannot legally castle, um, white still has castling rights. So meaning the king hasn't moved, the rook hasn't moved, it's still legal to castle should that bishop move somewhere else, enabling white to castle. Whereas in the second position, now that white has actually moved the rook from g1 to it, you know, to g1 and then back to h1, white no longer has castling rights. And so these two positions are not identical. 
Um, so if we scroll on a little further here, rook h1, rook a8. Now, if white was to, uh, you know, um, make a claim here, um, say uh, he wanted to play rook g1. Um, well, I guess in the situation of rook g1, it would be uh, because white yeah, no longer has the one, right one, to one, castle. One, yep. Yeah, but um, if, you know, the position after rook a8 um, is not, we haven't seen the same position, well, we've seen the same position three times, but the legal moves of all the pieces is not um, considered the same because white in the first position still had castling rights, but after, uh, in both of the other times that we reached the same position, um, white no longer has castling rights because they can't sign. Yeah, and, so, and for US chess rules, it'll be like as uh, eight, rule eight, a one, two and three, which was like the idea of temporary uh, can castle and also permanently can castle. Right. So that's the distinction on, was just on the king side, right? Uh, yes, on the king side, yes. So, yep. And then, uh, so this this basically is uh, one of the scenarios you have to look at in terms of castling, uh, especially if you get a repetition early on. Um, just make sure you take castling into effect. And then also, um, I'd like to show a position that actually happened in one of my uh, in the Sinkfield Cup 2015. When I was uh, the chief arbiter, uh, this was a game. Magnus Carlsen had the white pieces. Uh, Nakamura had uh, Hikaru Nakamura had the black pieces, and uh, we're going to see the position here after rookie one. Uh, so black just played rookie one, and uh, it's white to play here. And then I'm going to scroll forward really quickly to move sixty eight black, and uh, we're going to see that sixty eight black. Uh, you see the position didn't actually change, 59 black and 68 black. The position is identical. So this is twice this position has been reached uh, with white to play. And then I'm going to mush on a couple of moves here. And we're going to get back to that same position here. Um, so after king e5, this is actually the same position that was reached after black 68 and black's 59th move. However, um, Hikaru claimed a draw um, in this position as black, saying this po same position has been reached three times. And uh, we had to make a ruling on that draw claim, obviously. Uh, the difference is here is that in the first two positions, when we see these uh, after rookie one, um, it's white's move here. But after king e5, it's actually black's move. So the difference is, uh, as we know from the rule, as we read earlier, the same player has to be on the move um, each time that position for it to be completely identical. So as white was on the move the first two times, and now black is on the move here, uh, this is not a valid claim. And hence, uh, the claim was denied. And uh, we gave two minutes to Mr. Carlson to continue the game. Uh, the game eventually did end up in a draw. But um, it just wanted to highlight a practical example that, that this stuff does happen even with uh, the best of players out there. Uh, so you've just got to be aware of that. So um, another example. So we've, we've looked at a few examples of repetitions. Uh, so let's get into um, the rest of the rules here. I know that's something we really, really... <laughs> all want to carry on and see. Yeah. So let's go back here. So we were looking at how to claim. Um, and then just one thing we need to clarify um, really quickly is that all draw claims are actually draw offers. So when somebody makes a 14C draw claim, which is triple occurrence of position, um, that means the opponent may immediately accept that draw offer because a draw claim is an implied draw offer. Uh, and the game's over. You don't have to uh, dig into whether the, uh, the claim is valid or not. Uh, if the opponent accepts the draw, uh, you're good. However, the opponent can say, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, I'd like the TD to rule on that claim. Um, in which case, you come over and you get involved. If the TD upholds the draw claim, then obviously the game is over. And if the TD does not uphold the draw claim, then the game continues. Uh, the draw offer is still in effect and the opponent may accept it or reject it. So that's the same as a draw offer. So um, if 
for instance, you get the situation where uh, a, um, we'll cover this later on, but a move needs to be uh, written down to claim the draw. Uh, the player then has to make that move on the board. And the opponent still has until they touch a piece to, to determine whether they want to accept that draw offer or not. Um, the same if they just claim a position that's already been on the board three times um, and that's not valid, um, then um, you know once they make a move, uh, the opponent can still actually um, accept a draw because it was a draw offer. So just be aware of that. You can save yourself a lot of time by just... Um, you know, realizing that a draw claim uh, is also a draw offer and the opponent may uh, just go ahead and immediately claim it uh, and accept. Uh, so some of these other rules we've already uh, touched on, um, so, but they are in the rule book, so we're just gonna run over them. Only a player to move may claim a draw uh, under 14C, which is triple occurrence. Uh, if the opponent is on move, a player may not claim. Um, and any clear claim that the player may have made before pressing the clock is invalid. However, the claim is still considered a draw offer. Um, so what, what does this mean? So when, when a, a player must be on the move, that basically means before they hit the clock. Uh, and we'll see uh, some wording uh, that meets that criteria uh, again a little later on. Uh, but basically, you're, you're on the move um, when it's your move. Um, all, when you've made a move, but you haven't pressed the clock. So, uh, you know, there, there is uh, a bit of a difference here. Um, resolution of claim. Uh, so if the claim is found to be correct, the game is drawn. If the claim is found to be incorrect, two minutes shall be added to the opponent's remaining unused time. Now, I mentioned earlier 14C2, uh, I put paragraph one, um, how to claim uh, up on the, on the screen. And now we're going to see 14C2, uh, the second paragraph, which basically is also uh, not practic not exactly word for word, but basically um, also very similar to 14C6. So here's 14C2, how to claim paragraph two. Uh, in both cases, if the opponent agrees, the game is drawn. If the opponent does not agree, the claimant may make the claim to the TD. If a TD denies the claim, the claimant is still obligated to play any announced or recorded move. The TD awards the opponent two extra minutes. So this has some extra wording in it that says the claimant is still obligated to play any announced or recorded move. So this is, I think, the only place where it states um, that the move that they write on the score sheet is the one that they have to play. Um, so again, even though this is entitled how to claim and it's in paragraph two, it, it really does look very similar to 14C6, resolution of claim. Um, and they, they basically say a lot of the same information. Uh, some other things to remember, um, you cannot um, you know, revoke a claim. So a player makes a draw claim under 14C, can't withdraw it, uh, and it's still considered a draw offer. If a player moves, then claims a draw and presses the clock, or claims a draw, then moves and presses the clock, the move stands, and this is considered an offer of a draw. So basically, if you make a move and press the clock, you're no longer on the move. <clears throat> so um, if you yeah. claim a draw and press the clock, um, you're no longer uh, on the move for, for the basis of a 14C claim. Uh, it just becomes basically a regular situation that you've made a move, offered a draw, and then hit the clock. A uh, regular draw offer. Mm -hmm. That's um, that, yep. And then we'll get into, oh, uh, sorry. Yep. And then we'll get into sudden death time pressure. Now, sudden mm -hmm. death is um, defined as the last period of a time control with multiple time controls, or if the game just has one uh, time control, like game 60. Um, so this is time pressure relating to sudden death. So a player with less than five minutes remaining may be awarded a draw by triple clearance of position based on the observation of a director, uh, deputy, or impartial witness. So if you're watching uh, and you uh, realize that a triple occurrence of position has happened and the player actually makes that claim, um, then you can actually award the draw based on, uh, based on your observation. Um, and we'll see why that's important in the next uh, rule. 
Um, and this also says a player may stop both clocks to see a TD in order to demonstrate the ability to force a triple occurrence of position. I don't think I've ever had that happen, Brian. Have you? No, that's way too close. I mean, especially in Blitz, you know, it's just right. like, no, that's not going to happen. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. So you, you can be a witness to time pressure uh, and time pressure, sudden death uh, portion of the time control. And, um, you know, you can uh, award a triple occurrence uh, position, cl draw claim. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, you can validate that draw claim based on your observation, which leads us nicely into 14C9, the claimant score sheet. Um, except for the previous rule, uh, the claimant must have a score sheet adequate to demonstrate the validity of the claim. Mm -hmm. So if a player is going to make a claim of a triple occurrence of position, they have to have a score sheet to back that up. So more often than not, um, a player, if they're no longer keeping score, cannot make that claim unless it meets the um, sudden death time pressure requirements of the previous rule. But, um, you know, so this says basically you got to have a score sheet to back up your claim and it's your score sheet that must demonstrate the three, you know, the triple occurrence of position, uh, not your opponent's score sheet. So now, you are I, the one that's, um, yep. May I interject and also refer to a question in the Twitch chat. So, ah. Um, so it's something very similar to what the, this rule is displaying, actually. So I guess Elijah EJ is asking, what is the rules of score sheet and the missing move pairs? Uh, can a player make a claim with more than three missing move pairs, provided that the missing move pairs do not affect the position? So, um, and, you know, I guess the rule says if you're missing a three move pairs, um, it's actually considered not a complete score sheet. Um, so I would say that you would need a complete score sheet to make a claim. Um, where, and this is also very uh, relevant because, especially during time pressure, um, and, and so like a tournament where there's two time controls and you have to make reach move 40, uh, I've seen some people, they just stop taking notation, they want to make their time control, and then, of course, they either try to use an incomplete score sheet to make a time perfect claim as well, um, in this case, it would be a draw for claim, but you know, without that evidence, it's hard to you know claim either you know you reach move forty or even a draw uh, position has occurred. So, oh. right. Well, I, I would go the other way as well right. to say that um, you know once you get past that time control, uh, a lot of times players don't mm -hmm. bring their score sheets back up to date and they carry on keeping score. Right, sorry, sorry, forty one. So right. yeah, so so later on, I think as long as, like I said, the wording says that the score sheet is adequate to demonstrate the validity of the claim. Mm -hmm. I think later on, if they can they can do that, even though they have some um, missing missing moves earlier on. Again, it's all it's all based on the player's score sheet. So if you yeah. can, you know, if they've got ten missing moves between moves thirty and forty and you're unable to work out how they got from 30 to 40, then, um, you know, it, it, it may be that they're unable to work out how to get there. And therefore, once you, if you can't get past move 30, um, you know, that, that score sheet might not be adequate enough. So I think a lot depends just on the, on the situation in hand uh, it, and the tournament director's feeling on whether that score sheet is adequate enough. Um, Even to, uh, to demonstrate that claim, yeah, and yeah, including handwriting too of the score sheets, you know, right. so scribbles and stuff like that. So, yep. So anyway, uh, let's move on. So there are some other rules um, that relate to triple occurrence of position, and um, well, the first one being fourteen K director declares draw for lack of progress. Um, so this is it's, it, it. It refers to fourteen C. But this, this actually is a, a way for a director to declare a draw while watching the game. If the same positions appeared as in 14C, so it refers to 14C as in the, the same position on the board, the same legal moves of all the pieces, the same color on the same squares, etc., for at least five consecutive alternate moves by each player, then the director can actually step in and declare that game drawn. The thing to remember here is that those five moves must actually be consecutive um, alternate moves by each player. So it, uh, if there are some in-between moves, like we saw in some of the examples, then that's not actually five consecutive alternate moves. Uh, this is a difference from the FIDE rule, um, which basically uses five positions uh, repeated. Um, uh, so just remember that, but if you're a 
uh, tournament director and you've got a game that's going on for a while and people just keep moving the same pieces back and forth, um, count to five and then declare it a draw. Uh, you save yourself some time and everyone else, no doubt. And then uh, we've got 14C4, mushing back a little bit in the rulebook. Uh, claim after moving without pressing a clock. So a player who moves and does not press a clock but allows it to run uh, still retains the right to a draw under 14C. So this is, uh, it's a little risky to actually make a move on the board uh, because if you accidentally start your opponent's clock, then you're no longer on the move and your draw claim cannot be um, you know, verified. However, if you make a move on the board and don't hit your opponent's clock, uh, you just let it run, um, it, it, you, know, you can still um, have your claim looked at. I would highly recommend if you're the tournament director and you come over there and the first thing you see is a clock still running, um, ask the players to stop that clock. So, um, and it says it is preferred that the players stop both clocks in order to retain the right to claim a draw under 14C. Um, so, and then we have 14C5, which says claimant's clock co um, continues to run. Uh, if a player who claims a draw under 14C fails to stop the clocks, the TD should instruct the player to stop them. So again, um, like I said, once you get over there, um, get over there and stop the clock um, from running and then you can make a, make a claim on it. Um, so that is basically uh, all of the rules discussed regarding triple occurrence of position. Um, so just a quick review. Remember the player must be on the move um, or he's moved and not press the clock. Uh, all the same pieces occupy the same squares and that's all the same color pieces occupy the same squares. Uh, all pieces have the same legal moves and that relates to both castling and en passant. Um, if uh, they should write the move, they will get to the triple occurrence. Um, or if the current position is triple occurrence, that's what you're looking for. Uh, the player can prove it via a score sheet or TD observation if in sudden death time pressure. And remember, a draw claim is always a draw offer. So, um, you know, that is really uh, a very simple review of what you should be looking for when somebody makes a triple occurrence claim and um, you need to be involved to verify that and as brian said when you get such a claim um, you don't use that board that you're using um, you basically find another board and set um, take the players and the score sheets with them and and play through the moves on another set because if you start messing around with the board and set that they're using and uh god forbid you cannot recreate that position um that that they've reached um you you end up with with quite the mess so please uh get yourself an external i've i've even gone as far as um not very good but taking them into another room whipping out my cell phone and playing through the moves because i wasn't able to access a board in a set but um you know uh, as long as everything is turned off and it's just just a position that they're seeing you know everyone was fine with that um and then obviously uh you know it, it it's it's just very simple i know a lot of people a lot of tds have an extra board and set handy uh and it comes in very useful for such claims and you and you will get these claims pretty often so uh let's move on to the trivia portion i know yep. it's what you've all been waiting for so um let's start off with trivia here uh so i am going to quickly uh open this and uh, let's see. Uh, so when can a player make triple occurrence of position claim? Is it A, when the player is on the move? B, when the position has just appeared for at least a third time? C, when a move is needed to make the same position appear for at least a third time? Or D, all of the above? If you uh, type A, B, C, or D in the chat channel, please. Any more votes? This one's a really simple one. Some of them get a little more difficult. All right, just one vote so far. People are shy. All right, I'll let Brian put everyone out their misery. I will close this off. Brian, what's the right answer? Uh, a, B, and C. So the correct answer is actually D, all of the above. Exactly, D, yep. all of the above. So that, that one's very simple uh, compared to some of the others that Brian uh, prepared for us. And uh, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna blame you for everything. Brian. Sure, sure. <laughs> All right, let's move on to question number two. 
a little more difficult. So again, answer in the chat channel by using A, B, C, or D. Uh, in a time pressure situation, White repeated the position three times in a hurry to make the time control. A few moves later, White realizes he's lost, but claims a draw because the position on moves 34, 38, and 40 was the same. Will White's claim be granted? Uh, is it A, yes, once the position's been repeated three times, the game can be declared a draw at any time. B, yes, so long as White has a completed score sheet, and Black does not have evidence refuting that fact. C, no, the claim is based only on the current position, or one about to appear. Or is it D, no, White needs to have less than five minutes to make a claim. Getting some answers in. This has happened to me. You know, <laughs> they try to, and I'm like, no. All right. <laughs> A few more seconds. Close the voting. Any more votes? All right. Let's close this one off. And Brian, the answer is uh, C. C, of course. No, the claim is based only on the current position, or one about to appear. So um, it doesn't matter the the fact that there was a repetition earlier on in the game uh it's it's only that current move that matters and uh yeah so yeah all right. i guess no draw insurance team now can't just secure the draw that way yep. and go all right it. let's move on to question three uh white writes down the move 37 queen d5 stops the clocks and claim a draw by triple clarence of position after reviewing it you rule the claim is not correct what steps do you now take is it A, inform White he must play 37 queen d5 and tell the players to start the clock? Is it B, inform White it's his move and tell the players to start the clock? Is it C, add two minutes to Black's clock, inform both players that the draw for still stands, inform White he must play 37 queen d5 and tell the players to start the clock? Or is it D, you personally make the move 37 queen d5 on the board on behalf of White and start Black's clock? All right, we don't have any votes yet. Maybe this one's uh, this one's a little, a little trickier. I'm hoping it shouldn't be. So we got the same couple of people voting in the chat. Come on, folks, don't be shy. You don't make mistakes. You don't learn anything. All right, a couple more seconds here. All right, let's close it off. And the answer is, Brian, would you like to do as the honor? Yeah, sure. Uh, I guess it, it will be C for this one. C, so. it sure is. Yep. So, um, yeah, so when uh, when you've denied a claim, um, you should add two minutes to the opponent's clock, uh, inform both players that the draw offer is, is still on the table, um, and inform the player who wrote down the score sheet, uh, wrote down the move on the score sheet. That's the move you're expecting him to play. Um, you know that you must play and then tell the players to restart the game uh, it's uh, should be a fairly simple process but uh, you know it's amazing how many times people don't remember to like add the two minutes or um, in you know inform the players that the draw for still stands etc so uh, mm -hmm. uh, we should make sure we're doing that as tournament directors all right let's move on to question four now this one this one causes a little I actually stole this question from uh, a Mike Hoffpower uh, workshop he did recently um, or, or something similar to it so in time pressure black shouts out i'm going to play rook d8 that's three times uh but doesn't write the move uh on his score sheet or stop the clocks uh you're watching the game uh you stood there you're the tournament director what do you do uh do you a ignore black uh because he didn't make the claim correctly B, tell the players to stop the clocks and make a ruling regarding the validity of the claim. Uh, and if it's not correct, Black will have to play Rook D8. Is it C, penalize Black for disturbing the other games? Uh, or D, tell the players to stop the clocks, add two minutes to White's clock, inform White that Black made a draw offer, but do not make a ruling on the claim as Black didn't make it correctly, meaning he didn't write down the move. Ooh, we don't have any votes on this one. <laughs> So thinking. <laughs> All right, we have one vote in. Do 
we have any more votes? Is everybody going to follow the leader of the first vote? Mm -hmm. Mm. Oh, wow. Divided. <laughs> Different answers this time. Divided answers. Anyone else like to vote? See Enrique stop voting on this one. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Wow. It's actually all different. Wow. No it's consensus. It's all different. This is your question, so. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, the change of vote. Okay. I'll change of vote. The pack yeah. mentality. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to close off the poll and then we'll discuss this a little bit. Mm -hmm. So actually, the the correct answer, uh, my correct answer, is actually B, and nobody voted for B. Um, so you would actually. Um, this is a valid claim, uh, even though the player didn't write down uh, the move on the score sheet. The rule actually says they should write down the move on the score sheet, not that they must. And also, um, when we saw 14C2, uh, the second paragraph, uh, it says that the player, if you uh, reject the claim, uh, the player has to make that the move that they announced or wrote down. Uh, so as in this case, Black actually announced he wanted to play Rook B8. Uh, so that's a, a valid claim for a triple occurrence of position. Um, and if that claim is not upheld, then Black will have to play the move he announced, which is Rook D8. Uh, that's, uh, that's, this, this did involve some discussion between national tournament directors. Uh, my initial answer was, well, I would, I would jump in, but I tell Black he needs to write down which move he wants to make. That wasn't one of the options I put down. I should have. Uh, but yeah, if you read the rules uh, actually quite literally, uh, it does say that he should write down the move, not that he must. Uh, but also, it does say that he's he's committed to whatever move he announced um, or wrote down. So uh, in this case, uh, this I, I believe this should be um, dealt with as a as a valid claim. And yes, I definitely like C as an answer. For sure. Uh, but <laughs> clean the last black for these other games. Yeah. That will teach him a lesson. But um, shouting. Yep. yeah. So so it was it was just a. Just a, a, a quick one we wanted to throw in there, just to get yeah. everyone thinking. Normally, yeah. these, these trivia are a little easy. So, mm -hmm. And um, I would say this one, definitely not advocating for shouting out the move for a draw claim. Just definitely right. prefer this to write it down. And definitely with something, a move like Rook D8 is very sometimes ambiguous, which Rook even, like Rook ADA, Rook FDA, which Rook are we doing? So. Yep, but. exactly. So um, for this last question here, mm -hmm. uh, let's, uh, let's have a look and uh, actually see if we can see the position here. Uh, let me run over here and show you the actual position. So in the position shown, um, the following moves are played uh, and I'm gonna make them on the board. So you've got the initial position here and uh, black, uh, white then plays rook a1, king h8, rook f1, king g7, rook a1, uh, king h8, Rook f1, king g7. And after black's king g7 move, can white make a claim that triple occurrence of the position has appeared on the board? Um, so let me go back to, well, this is a position here that's relevant. Uh, you can see all the moves. And uh, the initial position uh, is exactly the same as this one, as uh, I will show there. And so uh, is the answer yes, since the position has repeated three times? Uh, is, the, is the answer yes, since white has a completed score sheet and black does not have evidence uh, refuting that fact? Is it C? No. Uh, white hung his rook three times and basically deserves to lose. I think that pawn can capture the rook. Uh, or is it D? We do not have enough information to determine an answer. No votes yet. Oh, this looks like there's no pulling the wool over uh, Enrique's eyes. So what would be mm -hmm. your answer in that case, Enrique? Next time, next time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and close off the poll. This was uh, this was a very interesting uh, situation um, here that Brian came up with, and the answer is actually uh, D. Uh, we we do not have enough information to determine an answer, and uh, let's let's see if we can quickly run through that. So um, as Enrique pointed out, um, right. So as Enrique pointed out, uh, the little trick was actually the first move in this position uh, was reached by a black plane e5 and uh, as we all know that uh, on the very next move white can actually play uh, en passant d takes e6 en passant um, and uh, so this position here um, white is able to play that move uh, and if we skip forward uh, this position here well, white is no longer able to play d takes e6. And so the first time we saw that position compared to this time is actually different. So when we get to this position, uh, this position uh, with all the same uh, pieces, having all the same legal moves is different from the first time we saw it. And therefore, uh, because we did not have the knowledge that e5 was the last move black played, um, the, the correct answer was D. We do not have enough information to determine an answer. And hence, um, the draw claim would not be would not be valid in this particular case. Yeah. Um, and and so, this is why I would like to see a full score sheet, you know, um, even at the beginning. I start from the beginning, even though the, the rows of positions would be like towards the end. Um, so I like to start from the Genesis and just move on forward uh, one at a time and just figure yep. out, you know, hey, what's going on here? Is there any captures, or, especially, you know, positions like this. So, um, and I guess uh, if you want to show actually what the unpleasant move actually does in this position here. Yes. Uh, by playing so, uh, let's, yes. let's go back here and actually play the move on mm -hmm. Um We will see that... Uh, yeah. I believe that move is checkmate uh, because you're uh, yep. in check here and you can't play the F pawn up because the rook is pinning the pawn yep. to the covers G. Yep, exactly. So uh, white missed a checkmate opportunity, okay. but thankfully, uh, uh, and after King G7, he no longer has the option to, to play that move. So. Uh, because uh, he only had the option to play d takes e6 was after black immediately played e5. All right, let's. Uh, that basically uh, finishes our evening here. Uh, let's go back to see Brian here. I think we've got. I got some internet issues going on, but uh, so Brian, um, that concludes our uh, presentation on triple occurrence of position. Thank you very much for uh, being willing to join us on the TD show tonight. And good luck with all of your future um, tournament directing endeavors. And uh, folks, we, have, uh, we are able to actually announce tonight, uh, next week's episode, uh, we will have uh, national tournament director and rulebook editor, Tim Just, uh, who will be giving us uh, a a rundown of his top de uh, top 10 tips for tournament directors. So please join us at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, next Thursday night, where we will have Tim just on the show. Thank you once again, Brian, and have a good night, everyone.